Oh. <laughs> I've been thinking a lot about this video for a while. And uh, I'm going to start off by saying that uh, the company I'm leased to does not pay owner operators a referral bonus. Uh, they do with company drivers. I can't remember how much it is. I can't remember how much it is. But owner operators are not paid company owner operators are not paid referral bonuses um so with that said i believe referral bonuses can be a good thing because obviously like if you've been with a company for a while and you have friends or you tell your friends or whoever it doesn't matter it could be a random person that watches your youtube video and comes to work for a company then i have no problem with a company like hey you know paying you some money because you know or giving you a bonus because like hey you know they because of you they came to work here i don't have an issue with that you know if our company decided to start paying owner operators a referral bonus then uh you know, I mean, I still tell people now if they want to come work here, like, yeah, tell them, you know, you saw my YouTube videos, whatever. I don't get any bonus for it, but I'm like, hey, why not? Um, however, if they did start paying a bonus, I would not, like, I can honestly say I would not, I'm not counting on that money. I don't need that money to pay my bills or survive. I don't care about a referral bonus, honestly. And that's one of the reasons why I say like I'm okay with it obviously okay then I'd start making money but I've also been with this company I've been with Colonial for uh, this June will be five years you know if people ask me about working here and being leased on like I was I was a company driver for three years and I've been a owner operator with them for two years if people ask me about them I give them the good the bad the ugly you know, I have my gripes with this company, but at the same time, it's not bad enough for me to, you know, choose to go work somewhere else, at least, you know, for right now. I enjoy working here, um, and I have my bad days, but you're going to have bad days no matter where you work. And that's the biggest thing is a lot of people, as soon as one they hit one little, you know, speed bump at a job or something, they just quit. And they, they, oh, well, I'm going to go work over here because oh, I don't like this one little thing that happened. So I'm going to go work for another company. And then those are the people that end up with 12 or 13, <laughs> you know, jobs within, you know, less than 10 years. And uh, I know some people that have had, you know, 10 jobs in one year. They've gotten multiple W-2s in one single year just because of that. I'm not talking multiple as in three or four. I'm talking ten or more. Um, I know at least one person that has done that. But the issue I have with referral bonuses and the whole reason I'm making this video is mainly for new drivers that they'll watch a video and say, oh, okay, you know, I'll put this person down. I want to come work here. They're, ha they're making all this money or they're doing this or that. I'm going to come work for this company. But when you look at it and you look at how long that person has been working for that company, sometimes it's, it's less than six months. In my opinion, you can't even give an opinion on a company if, you know, for less than six months. A year, sure. You know, you have a, a year of dealing with the company, seeing different aspects of it, dealing with certain things. Then I, I would believe, okay, well, they've been there for a year. You know, maybe it's decent something like that but it's the people that have been there you know 90 days as you know as soon as they like get a hat and everything and it's like get out of orientation they're like oh yeah here's my here's my uh driver code whatever come work for x company it's the best ever i paid for that hat i've never worked for swift but <laughs> i also have a polo shirt i found out you can buy stuff from certain companies without even working there anyway <laughs> it's 
anyway that is that's that's the main thing behind the video is be careful of like watching youtube videos especially when people are pushing you know like oh yeah use my referral code for this or that because look at how long they've been with the company i'm not trying to throw shade on anybody but at the same time people need to be cautious of that there are people out there who you know in my opinion it's it's partially their fault for like just blindly following someone but it's also the other person's fault for going to a company being there for a very short amount of time and just saying oh hey this is the best place ever come you know come here and and come work here you know especially and that's just for company i'm not even getting into like when it comes to leases it's like i'm in a lease purchase with colonial i'm very open about that on my channel i do not support like i not support but uh i don't i don't push the lease i don't tell people like oh yeah you need to come here and you need to do you know you need a lease on you need to do a lease purchase no everyone's situation is different and you know whenever it comes to leasing that is it's a i mean you watched my last video about romanticizing like owning a truck is a lot of people see that lease purchase as getting into uh you know or the easy way into owning a truck but yeah when it comes to leasing i have people email me all the time or ask me questions about colonials lease and i'll tell it like i don't really put out videos about it because there's they're constantly changing things as far as like um changing things in the contract or whatever you know whatever they have going on and so you want the most up-to-date information i can answer some questions but um most of those people i just give them the the phone number to our owner operator supervisor and she can answer way more information you know about the leasing programs uh for colonial but i don't push that I don't sit there and say, oh yeah, if you come here, you got to be a lease. They have company drivers that are paid hourly, and I made good money as a company driver. Great benefits on that side. And um, when I switched over to, you know, leasing with them, I was actually, like, it's it sucked because I lost really good benefits as far as for the, you know, health, insurance, and everything like that. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I tell people, like... I, you can come here and, and do lease, jump into lease purchase or, you know, leasing, whatever. But if you've never leased a truck or anything like that, honestly, I'd recommend coming here, working as a company driver for at least six months. Make sure you like it here. Make sure, you know, you understand how to use our, like the tablet and everything that we have, the, the apps that we use, you know, to do our loads and stuff like that. Do that with, you know, then you have no risk whatsoever. You really don't have any risk other than just, um, you know, the risk of like switching a job and figuring out that you don't like it. But you'd be, you would have even more risk if you jump into a lease, you know, and then you're put, you're pushing out all this money, you know, paying for your own fuel, everything else, and then you're on 1099, having to put back money for your taxes and things like that. So I tell people, like, you can go in a lease. Most emails that I've gotten is about the lease purchase. Um, but if someone asked me, like, hey, should I do lease or should I? You know, I would say you should go, like, be a company driver. Make sure you like it here. And being a company driver, you're hourly. And whatever market you're working in, wherever, like, part of the country that you're working in. Excuse me. Um, see what kind of loads you have. You know, see how much. See what. See what loads you're running on a on a daily basis and how much you're working, you know, and then you can kind of inquire of like, hey, how much are these loads paying to where, you know, maybe you can get an idea, you know, of how much money you would make if you switched over to owner operator with them. That's what I would recommend. Be a company driver first. Make sure you like the company before you get into leasing. You know, because leasing, it's a very, I said it in my last video, it's a very touchy subject. For some people, you know, like for me, it works great. I like it. I have very low overhead. You know, I can, 
pretty much guarantee, like, not guarantee, but I can live comfortably on my personal side and afford all my, you know, bills and stuff on the business side, you know, making the money that I make. I'm fine with that. I talked to someone last night who, uh, down in Jacksonville, they called me about it. They had questions about it. Well, he's got a family, he's got kids, stuff like that. I told him, I said, dude, if you ain't got, you know, two or three months worth of, like, to pay your bills, just in case anything happens, I said, you know, or at least have a month of money saved up. Um, because I said, yeah, it's, you know, you don't know what you're going into. If you have kids and stuff like that, it's much safer just to switch, be a company driver, figure out, you know, get comfortable with the company and then decide if you want to, you know, switch over to lease. But I know I've gotten way off, off topic with this one, but the main thing is the referral bonuses. Don't, blindly jump to a company just because someone goes there and isn't you know they get out of orientation and they're like oh this is the best company ever you need to come work here and then you go there you find out oh this place sucks and then the person that referred you by the time you call them you get out of, out of orientation they're already in orientation for another company <laughs> you know it just stuff like that happens it does and so the main thing is like be cautious about that you know, if, someone, if you're watching a YouTube video and someone's saying, hey, yeah, this is the best company ever, come work here, ask them how long they've been working there. Because that matters. If they've been there for 90 days or six months, be cautious about that. You know, but I've been, like, I've been with my company, or this company for going on five years. You know, I, I'm not going to sugarcoat things. I'm not going to say, like, this is the best company in the world to work for. You know, there's negatives, there's positives. It's at the end of the day, it's what are you, what works for you? What are you willing to deal with? You know, for the money you make at the company, stuff like that. I have my days where I just want to say, you know, forget this, turn the truck in and go home. But though, luckily those days are far and few between. And even on those days, I just take a breath, tell myself it ain't as bad as I think it is. I'm just mad for no reason <laughs> you know think about it and usually by the end of the day i'm like yeah there ain't you know i'm letting this small stuff get to me but you're gonna have that no matter what job you work at you're gonna have days where you just get frustrated it happens but um but yeah i know i kind of bounce around to different topics in my videos i swear i got like adhd or something i don't know but <laughs> the main thing is do your research, do your research. You know, if you're talking to somebody that's trying to get you to, you know, come work for the company that they work for or something like that, ask them how long they've been there. You know, if they've been there for multiple years then Hey, I'm in my opinion, maybe it should be like a safe bet that a, hey, if they've been there for multiple years, maybe they enjoy it. They're fine working there and it's not, you know, a bad place or something. So, that's my main thing is just be cautious anyway figure out put that video out there and uh it's like y'all have a good day